Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, and I'm, I'm Aisha Fayaz. I'm an equity research analyst at Patriot Securities. I welcome you all to the third quarter uh, briefing session for Fauji Foods Limited. Uh, we're delighted to have the CEO of the company, Mr. Usman Ahmed Saab. And uh, we also have Mr. Vaseem Heather with us, who is the CFO of the company, and Mr. Khurim Javed, who's the Chief Commercial Officer. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank the management of Fauji Foods for taking our time and conducting the session. Uh, so currently, we have almost uh, 30 participants who joined us virtually. Uh, so without wasting any further time, uh, I would just uh, share the brief uh, layout of this uh, uh, corporate briefing session. The session will begin with a short presentation by the speakers that will be followed by the Q&A session. Uh, I would request all the participants to please write their questions in the chat box and I will read out those questions to the management. Uh, with this, I would uh, you uh, request Mr. CEO Saab and Mr. CFO Saab to please begin the session. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, great to be talking to you again. It's a good time. Uh, we've got good news uh, lined up. So, uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, we'll start the session. Uh, as we always start the session, uh, please note that any forward looking statements, any expectations, any future events uh, are obviously subject to a lot of uncertainties. So, therefore, you should not rely on any of the statements. Uh, if made by the management and, and any of your investment decisions should always be done through your own research. Utman, if you will, please. Gee, uh, we always like to start with our vision, uh, which we uh, formulated last year. That is, we are driven uh, by this sense of purpose of unleashing Pakistan's promise in everything we touch, whether it is our customers, our products, our employees, or our shareholders. Uh, we always slide started with this slide and it is, uh, we always talk about the strength of our portfolio. And we used to mention that we have one of the most complete dairy portfolio backed by a very strong shareholder patronage. Um, and it's very appropriate to talk about it because uh, we'll touch upon it later. The decision uh, that you must have all heard about in terms of acquisition of cereals and pasta business, how it extends our portfolio and is again it again demonstrates uh, the strength that the shareholder and the group brings to Fauji Foods. So uh, looking at our uh, performance for the nine months, uh, we're really happy to report, Alhamdulillah, from a revenue perspective, we've grown revenue same period last year to this year of uh, 83%. Uh, we've also grown our both in terms of percentage as well as absolute amount so if you see our absolute amount has grown by 545 uh, percent our ebitda has actually uh, improved significantly uh, last year it was 702 million of a negative ebitda this year alhamdulillah we are at 670 million positive ebitda thereby uh, the turnaround is about 1.37 billion uh, on a profit after tax basis We've improved our PAT by 1.8 billion last year, same period last year, we were nearly a 2 billion loss company. And uh, as we stand year to date, 23, uh, we are at 109 million uh, loss. Uh, from a revenue perspective, if you see uh, year on year, our revenue has grown. Mm -hmm. On the right side, top chart shows 2021, we were at 6.7 billion, we grew by about 21 percent to 8.07 billion in 2022 and then in 2023 we've grown by about 83 percent to 14.7 billion uh, as at the end of nine months and uh, obviously if you see quarter on quarter also alhamdulillah there's been significant uh, growth within our revenue and obviously that's driven by the various strategies that the management has deployed Um, if you will note, uh, Alhamdulillah, since March 23, 
uh, FFL has consecutively uh, been posting uh, bad positive numbers. It's uh, seven months now till September that the company has been positive, with the highest bad being booked uh, in September 2023. Same thing, this shows the PAT evolution journey uh, across last year and this year. Uh, quarter two, we posted uh, 22 million of uh, PAT positivity and quarter three, we posted 39 million of PAT positive numbers. Uh, and, and as you see, 20, from 2022, we in quarter three and quarter four, we had slowly started our upward journey. Usman, Usman, you Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Apologies. So uh, this is the strategy that has delivered the turnaround. It has three. It has had three pillars. One is fueling growth, and within growth, we emphasize upon upon margin accretiveness of our new launches. Uh, what we were not able to share with the shareholders, but obviously we can talk about it now, is that internally we've always eyed the acquisition within the group of other consumer businesses, provided they were margin accretive. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to report that today we've reached a point where we have received the board authorization. Uh, likewise, our COGS reduction has played a big role, a role in increasing the gross margin. And all of that has been underpinned by a continuous pursuit in building capability in people and processes right across the organization. KJ? Yeah, as per our strategy of driving margin accretive uh, volume and value growth, uh, very happy to report that if you see the UHT milk, we have grown versus the same period last year, 45% in volume uh, and 108% in value. Uh, liquid tea whitener is a product which is a commoditized product and we are not driving it very, uh, very aggressively. Uh, our core focus is the value added products, which is UHT, butter, cream, cheese, and uh, flavored milk. So we have a, a very strong run uh, of volume and value growth across uh, categories, uh, which has resulted into the numbers that uh, are reflected in the previous slides. Um, again, if we look at our distribution business, which is the most profitable channel within the distribution uh, channels, uh, our distribution uh, business has grown 72% in volume and 121% in value if I look at the margin accretive categories. And the growth is coming all across. Karachi, uh, Peshawar are the biggest uh, pillars of growth, but uh, there is a strong growth, high double digit growth coming, uh, volume and value uh, across channels. Um, as a consequence of that, uh, the last one year, we have had a great run in the dairy. Uh, we estimate that the total dairy growth is about 3%. These are the estimations, uh, whereby our volume growth has been 42%. Now, Kantar is the world's authority in terms of the consumer and marketing research data. Uh, they operate in 100 countries, and uh, every country they run the Category Impact Award. Now, Category Impact Award is a function of certain criteria, which means in last one year, which brand in the category has grown the most? And in last one year, which brand in the category has moved the needle most uh, on the consumer uh, share of mind and uh, positive uh, consumer parameters? We are very uh, uh, proud to uh, report that this year, 2023, we competed with 23 dairy brands in the category. And out of those 23 brands, there were market leader and the big other multinational brands were also competing in the same category. And Noorpur has been awarded as the most impactful brand uh, of dairy milk in Pakistan for 2023. Gee, so um, as you must have already known from uh, from the announcement on PSX, uh, we will be looking 
uh, to acquire for the cereal business. So we have the board approval. We will be going for a shareholder approval and then obviously all the necessary uh, legal and regulatory approvals. But for the cereals business, is a massive business. It's a it's a very old and very established business. So we are looking to acquire that, uh, and then there is a pasta a plant that we are looking to acquire, where we'll acquire the shares of the entity. Um, as a part of the transaction, independent due diligence and third party valuations and all necessary legal checks were done. Uh, finally, review and approval uh, by the board was given recently. Uh, on cereals, as uh, you would note, we've got flakes and coated cereals, porridges and desserts. While uh, on the pasta side, it's a state-of-the-art plant uh, which can produce pasta of long and short formats. Uh, we do expect, uh, inshallah, that uh, these acquisitions will should result in uh, a margin accretive uh, uh, performance for us as well as impact the EPS. That's our expectation. And as I said, uh, please do your own researches and uh, take things from there. Kede, up silent Yeah. Uh, these potential acquisitions are going to complete not only our breakfast table with uh, the Pakistan's most favorite cereals uh, coming to the party, uh, but also uh, enables us to uh, give our consumers the best meals all across the day uh, when the pasta uh, is also successfully acquired. So we are going to be the most diversified dairy from dairy to a most diversified food um, and dairy company. Uh, so we are super excited to announce that. Thank you, Ji. Uh, that's all from us. Uh, Aisha, uh, if there are any questions, the management would be happy to answer. Yes, uh, thank you for the detailed presentation. Uh, we will now move towards the Q&A session. Uh, I would request uh, the virtual participants once again to please write their questions in the chat box. And I will read out those questions to the management. Uh, so firstly, uh, we've received a lot of questions with regards to the recent announcement of Fodgy Foods with regards to the uh, upcoming transactions. Uh, the pasta and Fodgy uh, cereal business particularly, that if the management could share some timeline for the transaction, uh, for the finalization of the transaction date, and uh, how will the company finance this transaction? Is it going to be uh, from loan or through right shares? If the company could share the strategy for it. Right. So uh, from a regulatory uh, and uh, legal perspective, uh, first step was getting our internal board approval, which Alhamdulillah we've received. Uh, we will be going to the shareholders. I, if I remember correctly, the expected date of shareholder meeting is 28th of December. Uh, we've, we will be going to CCP uh, and then obviously to other regulatory authorities. My view and Osman can probably back me up on this is we would expect the transaction to complete in Q1 of 2024, probably early, uh, and it'll obviously depend on how long the various uh, regulatory authorities take. And on the financing side, uh, right now, as of now, we do not see any uh, need the way the transaction is structured. Uh, however, there is an option for uh, uh, for an other than rights uh, issue if required. But at this stage, uh, those things are, uh, I think, a little far away right now. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's another question with regards to the pasta business that when is the production expected to start? And uh, will the company buy a full stake of other uh, Fauji Infra West or will Infra West be a joint venture of Fauji Foods and Singaporean company? So uh, right now, uh, FF Fauji Foundation owns 100% of FIFL or Fauji Infra West. 
it was originally originally a joint venture but uh, it was 100% acquired by foggy foundation so therefore uh, we don't see any need as of now for a joint venture uh, it will be run by uh, once the approval comes through it will be run 100% as uh, a subsidiary of uh, foggy foods on the operation side i would request usman zahir to elaborate a little so uh, we have a complete integration and operational plan in place uh, naturally once we have the uh, requisite approvals done we will start moving and you can anticipate it can take a few months for us to get into uh, production and market after that okay uh, thank you uh, moving on to the next question can you also share the historical margins uh for the cereal business and what could what could we expect the margins for the pasta business along with the volume you can see that that's too internal and information to declare however i think uh it would be safe to say that uh, cereal has reasonably good margins and uh, pasta we also expect to have reasonable margins beyond that uh, i would not be able to to give out anything yeah. uh, let me very quickly build on that uh, look we we presented to you our growth ambition of becoming a 100 billion company in 5 years time within that uh, the margin accretive growth uh, uh, had this leg of acquisitions and these acquisitions happened because they are a margin aggressive and b sustainable in the long term so they are on strategy this is how we would like to chart our path to the scale that we dream that we dreamt of as part of our strategy so they bring uh, i think as uh, wasim mentioned in one of the earlier slides they are eps aggressive and they are margin aggressive okay thank you for clarifying that uh, other than that, uh, you were talking about the volumetric growth of the value-added products. Could you also please uh, share the market share in each of the segments? For instance, uh, when you were talking about butter and creams and USD milk, uh, can you please uh, uh, give where the company is, what is the current market share of the company and what are what is the future target for those product lines? Yeah. As we said that our margin portfolio is uh, showing a very strong growth vis-a-vis uh, -vis the category estimated growth. Uh, there has been an increase in our market share. Um, we estimate that our butter is about 56% of the retail butter market. Um, as per the very credible uh, market uh, research company, uh, we have grown the highest market share uh, on milk this year as well. Uh, so A uh, versus category, we are growing exponentially high and also in the marketing, in the, in the consumer, in the market research uh, uh, surveys that is coming up. So we estimate to be a, a good third position in the dairy market. Uh, we are up against very big competitors, but we are trying to cover the ground in terms of uh, the exponential growth that we are uh, getting in milk. Similarly, our cream growth, um, our cheese growth, uh, they have been uh, very strong high double digits. Uh, so on this run, uh, we don't see that there is any reason uh, that we should not uh, grow at the same pace, if not more. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, we have some strong plans uh, to support this uh, growth agenda. And also one follow-up question with regards to the growth in the value-added segment. Do you think that this is a sustainable growth or was it uh, this high number because of some seasonality factor? Or uh, where do you think that a sustainable growth uh, number should be uh, for each of the segments? Yeah, I think, uh, look, uh, there is definitely seasonality with some products. For an example, the cream has a cyclic uh, upsurge in winters and also during Ramadan, uh, so is the butter. But then milk has a very uh, consistent uh, uh, growth pattern across, uh, across the year. Uh, 
so there is seasonality and every company every good company which is hungry for uh, uh, the sheer growth and the volume growth uh, builds their interventions at that moment of change uh, which are the defining uh, occasions or defining uh, events uh, in the year and similarly we invested quite a lot in the last one year on noorpur and kantar most impactful in, uh, brand uh, of the year is testament to that um so we have our plans and as i said that there are couple of strengths that we have a we are growing share and the other opportunity that we see corresponding to that strength is that still we have a lot to gain from uh, the stabilized uh, market uh, leaders or the market big players um so our interventions are uh, uh, were very well received this year we have the same interventions or the better interventions planned in the subsequent year so we would like and we would like to believe that uh, we can actually accentuate uh, our growth trajectory further okay that's great to know uh, so the next question is with regards to the ongoing social boycott that has the company seen any uh, increase in the sale volumes uh, for any particular segment in the ongoing quarter and uh, uh, is it a significant number can you give some estimation uh for in terms of volume for any segment that has seen a drastic growth because of the ongoing social boycott um if AJ. i could answer that question uh look i think um if you look at pakistan's conditions earlier because of devaluation um and now due to these certain circumstances there is now a trend which is which mm -hmm. spreads almost a couple of years of localization uh we have benefited from it in past through 100% conversion of mcdonalds to noorpur cheese uh, and likewise kfc uh and and a number of other accounts um we have likewise converted a few big very big institutional businesses as well uh so this is a trend which has been set for one reason or the other for last two years uh and we've been able to uh benefit from it uh as far as the current situation is concerned look uh, we are a pakistani brand with an unmistakable pakistani identity uh, and we noorpur is experiencing growth uh, with or without this situation uh, we like uh, khoram alluded to earlier we are the fastest growing milk brand in pakistan for two years running uh, so we are on that uh, growth trend and just to add to what usman has said remember the results that we've discussed uh, up till september uh, did not have this impact of uh, of this boycott right so if you look across the last uh, uh, years that we've discussed or we've shown uh, that has that growth has come through as kj has alluded through our own strategies through through our offerings to the market and uh, while this may be if any upsurge does come up it may be temporary however uh, we have our plans in place to ensure that uh, our growth continues inshallah okay uh thank you for your answer so moving on to the next question uh so uh, when is the pasta production expected for the company yeah i think usman has already answered the question uh i think what is the promise that uh, foji food makes to the consumers is that anything that we will launch uh, in this company has to be corresponding right with our uh, purpose which is unleashing pakistan's promise in everything we touch and when i launch the product or we launch the product we are talking about the taste so we want to understand the market we should be in the state of readiness in terms of uh, production uh and yes we want to do it uh, as fast as possible but we want to do it on strategy with the right product credentials and the right competitive mm -hmm. edge um uh, so we are under we will with this integration work we will understand the market understand the consumer understand the competitive landscape and what are the consumer unmet needs which can give leverage uh, to foji food in terms of position ourselves to win uh, not in terms of position ourselves to get faster into the market to start with 
Okay, that's great. And could you also please uh, share some of the key highlights, including the market size of the cereal and pasta business, for instance, for the company, and uh, what is the initial market share that the company is targeting uh, over the next five years, for instance? Yeah, I think we are at a very nascent stage of that. Having said that, we have tried to estimate the market, which are the best estimations. Um, cereal seems to be about a six ish billion uh, total industry. Uh, and as Osman alluded, that uh, seems to be a very strong uh, bottom line uh, business. Uh, pasta is bigger. And pasta is is not only globally growing, but also in Pakistan, it has grown uh, very big. Our estimation of pasta consumer business is about 12 billion uh, per annum. And there is another segment of pasta, which is a loose uh, sales in the wholesale. Uh, that is another 6 billion. So the consumer business of pasta, where we have some very strong competitors like uh, Big Parlor and Paulson, uh, that is very margin accredited. And uh, anything which sells as a commodity within the pasta business, which is food sell business, uh, will have lesser margins on that. Okay, so uh, when you talked about the competition rate parlor, for instance, how does what is the company's strategy to uh, compete with uh, such renowned brands? And uh, how well do you think would the company be able to uh, compete against these such established brands? I think if I may answer that question, we should be able to take confidence from the fact that we've taken on two of the strongest brands in dairy industry, very deeply entrenched, mm -hmm. uh, like Alpers and Milk Pack, and have outgrown them by a massive multiple. So it comes down to doing the basics right, which means developing the right consumer-facing proposition, including the product, and had leveraging our already existing strength of route to market. So I'm fairly confident that inshallah, we should be able to carve our own space in the segment. Okay, that's great to know. Uh, so the next question is that how does the pasta business uh, synergize with the current dairy related business of FFL? Uh, look, uh, it goes back to creating a consumer food vertical strategy. Uh, so there are natural integrations and synergies at place, for instance, route to market, for instance, supply chain procurement. Uh, and then there are many opportunities to leverage each other's strength. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, we are developing with the respective teams a detailed integration plan. And in that, we will also bring to fore the opportunities to uh, synergize and leverage uh, the strengths. Okay. Uh, so the next question is, does the company plan to tap the dry milk market in the coming future? Uh, look, like I mentioned earlier, we have our strategy. Uh, we have an ambition to become a hundred billion company in five years. In order to do that, uh, we will have to acquire businesses like we've just done. And we will also need to enter into new categories. Um, so that is something that we will, like many other options that we are considering, uh, we evaluate, make a commercial uh, decision based on the business case. And uh, so we are in the process of evaluating this along with many other uh, potential categories that we can play in. Okay. Uh, the next question is the price of Nopur milk is selling at slight discount as compared to milk pack and all pearls. Is it expected to normalize in the future or the delta will remain in place? I think in terms of our uh, trade pricing, uh, we are pretty much at par uh, with uh, Nopur, with uh, Nestle and all pearls. Uh, there are certain big discounters and they have their own strategy in place. Uh, they maintain the delta from their own pocket as our focus is very much on the margin lucrative. So in terms of our trade pricing, we are no less than uh, the competition. Uh, but there is a there is a discounter's own strategy in place, for an example, uh, the big players like Intias and Metro. And uh, it's not that perpetually we are cheaper versus the competition. 
there are a lot of factors that uh, these guys have their own uh, segment uh, play uh, which they orchestrate so there are times right now for example at this point of time we are expensive uh, horses golfers in metro uh, so this is their strategy from a company point of view we don't want to keep any uh, differential of pricing we think our product has credential we are working on the marketing and our product when gets trial moves into the funnel and takes the consumer towards the repertoire uh, regularity and loyalty so yeah okay uh, so could you could the company also please comment on the retail distribution strategy after the commencement of these two new uh, projects yeah i think sorry but yeah i think um, our uh, serial business is a very well established business uh, and we would like that business to continue uh, reaping uh, the benefits and the dividends uh, in terms of the profitable profitable growth trajectory that that business is on so we will take it as a business unit and we will just sync it in uh, with our current plans uh pasta is going to be a new launch and uh, we will see that which vertical has more synergies when we launch pasta into it but this all boils down to what usman has said in the in the beginning we are have we are right now working on a very extensive integration business integration planning and the idea is that what we have acquired we sustain that uh, business uh, and we build it very carefully Uh, towards the margin creative uh, strategic lever that we have okay so when you talk about uh, margin expression so is the pasta and uh, cereal business the margins are going to be closer to the butter and cheese segment or is it going to be higher than that if the company could give some range of it yeah i think like uh, these are these are good margins uh, we would not uh, speak more on that uh but uh, they fit in very well uh and this is not uh this is as per our strategy i think we articulated our strategy about two and a half years back and this is just a follow up on that strategy so we were very careful what we would have wanted to acquire and we are very careful what we want to build in dairy uh so yeah this this gets in line with our uh, marshall decretive uh, strategy okay that's great to know uh the next question is with regards to the key risks with uh, the upcoming projects what does the company think are the upcoming can be few challenges for the company in the pasta and cereal business yeah uh, look there are certain challenges that we all are familiar with which is uh, when you are in operating in pakistan which is the risk of devaluation uh, none of the businesses are insulated from that uh, and we've baked it into Uh, how we valued these businesses um other than that uh, there are there is a when we did the uh, evaluation uh, obviously all these things were taken into account um and are we there are plans in place to uh, take this business and raise our game to the next level okay uh we don't have any further questions in the chat box so uh with this uh i would you know request the management to please say the concluding remarks uh look thank you very much i think it's a very important moment for this organization uh with this board approval and pending the regulatory authorities i think this transits for g foods into the next stage of its journey of become becoming a consumer food powerhouse in pakistan um we had to get our basic business right the capability that we've built over last few years are all going to play a big role in realizing our ambition and we are very happy and we are very excited to be taking on these two businesses okay thank you so much uh, the to the management for uh, conducting the session with kpet securities uh thank you for uh, thank you to all the participants who joined us virtually uh with this uh i would like to conclude today's session uh thank you for joining take care allah hafiz allah hafiz thank you very thank much thank you very much aisha thank you allah hafiz that's i should be allah hafiz